Atop the Soyuz rocket is a smaller rocket, the launch escape system, that would fire in the event of a problem during launch. That system is designed to pull the spacecraft and crew clear of the Brewster, enabling the Soyuz capsule to parachute to a safe landing in the event of an emergency during the launch or early stages of the climb to orbit. The first stage uh, has four liquid engines strapped to the side of the core vehicle. Each will burn for about one minute, 58 seconds, before they are jettisoned. The core engine of the first stage also serves as the second stage and continues to burn until the 4 minute 58 second mark into the flight. And the third stage has a single engine that burns for about 4 minutes, 2 seconds, shutting down at the 9 minute mark of the flight. At that point, the Soyuz will be in its preliminary orbit on 143 by 118 miles. At 10.38 p.m. Central Time, Houston, we're now 26 minutes to launch. The Soyuz is 23 and a half feet long and weighs 15,800 pounds. It is comprised of three modules. The orbital module is at the top where the crew has a small amount of room to move around during the two-day flight to the station. At the bottom is the instrumentation and propulsion module and sandwiched between the descent module in which the crew resides for launch and landing. The crew uses the orbital module, sometimes known as the habitation module, during operations in orbit. It includes the docking mechanism, the hatch, and the rendezvous antennas. This portion of the Soyuz separates from the remaining compartments after the deorbit burn has been completed to the end of the spacecraft's mission. The descent module contains personally contoured couches for the crew members during launch, entry, and landing. This module contains all controls and displays necessary for critical flight activities. It also contains life support provisions, batteries for the re-entry and landing, and the parachutes and soft landing rocket engines to slow the Soyuz just before touchdown on the Kazakh steppe. The instrumentation and propulsion module houses the oxygen storage tanks, attitude control thrusters, avionics and communications and control equipment. The propulsion portion of this module handles all orbital maneuvers, including those needed for the rendezvous with the space station and the deorbit burn at the end of the spacecraft's mission. The two solar rays are folded against the body of the instrumentation propulsion module, which separates from the descent module after the deorbit burn, just like the orbital module does. The solar ray wings span about 35 feet. The entire capsule served not only as a crew transport vehicle to and from the space station, but also as an emergency return vehicle in the event the crew should have to leave the station unexpectedly, remaining docked to the station for six months. About 30 minutes ago, that onboard timing device that controls the final major events leading up to liftoff was activated. This type of launch vehicle has been used in various configurations since 1963. Its first use as a crew transport vehicle took place in 1967. The Soyuz now stands ready to launch Alexander Skortsov, Tracy Caldwell Dyson, and Mikhail Kornienko toward their home in space for the next five months. The International Space Station's Expedition 23 and 24 crews will greet three of the last four scheduled space shuttle missions and help 